Brezhnev has held firm in the belief about a young earth. Theistic evolutionists have compromised and agree with mainstream scientists that an old earth is valid and evolutionists of course have the same view. Rationalists believe in a global flood, the flood of Noah about 4500 BC and theistic evolutionists believe it was only local. Evolutionists believe in no such event. They might agree to some other major floods in recent time and obviously we all believe in general floods as we have them even in our own day. So creationists pretty much say God is almighty. Theistic evolutionists reckon God interferes along the way and evolutionists have the view that God does not exist of course. Now this is not a straitjacket. Strangely you find Christians that hold the evolutionist view and divorce their physical view with their spiritual view or beliefs. I don't know quite how that's possible. And then again, there are agnostics who actually believe in the creationist view, yet they don't believe in a personal God. So how do you view the world? The blogger Lane Chaplin once said, If you are a follower of Christ, you will defend his doctrine. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And that's pretty much the heart of apologetics. Um, if you call to that ministry, but even if you're not, at some point you will have to give account in your personal testimony to people and if it's intellectual of nature just remember to be gentle and respectful of the other person's view. Before I share a typical vlog on speciation, uh, for you people who might not know a vlog is just a blog with some video content or it can also be textual comments on a blog and this one is particularly on a very um, general and common view on speciation going from microevolution right the way up to macroevolution. And a creationist responded, this is only part of the debate, creationist said, sure microevolution is observable, but where is your evidence of bears turning into whales and cattle into dolphins? The evolutionist came back and said, first there is no such evidence and no such claim made by modern evolution. Evidence for macroevolution and only creationists make such a distinction, which is by the way not true, they do, exists in the fossil record. Without even getting into the fossil record, let me just ask you this, what mechanism do you propose that would prevent speciation given your admission that microevolution occurs? Rationalist came back and said, microevolution is speciation in action, so why would I present a mechanism against it? Point is, one kind of animal or life form hasn't, doesn't and cannot change into another kind. Systematics is not always clear on where the boundaries occur and the attacks that can be quite arbitrarily assigned in this regard. As for the fossil record, it is poignant evidence of a catastrophic event or mass mortality that took place as a result of a global flood. That's all. Evolutionists came back yet again and said speciation has been observed many times and I'm sure the creationists did not disagree with that. Is this restating a fact? Global flood? He or she asked. Nonsense. He or she concluded. So there are misconceptions uh, regarding the debate, obviously the theory of evolution doesn't say that bears have turned into whales. 
Okay, but what I think the um, creationist meant was ancestrally an animal such as a bear, in other words a land mammal, could have turned into a whale. That's according to the theory of evolution. But I don't think the creationist was confused about that. Or cattle turning into dolphins. It's a bit of pun, but again, <laughs> ancestrally, land mammals turning into modern animals such as dolphins. And that is the theory of evolution in terms of macroevolution, or its full blown sense. So there are a few considerations that we have to consider. Is creation divine or not? And does macroevolution occur? Is it fact or fiction? And also theistic evolution. Is an old earth valid? And was the flood of Nava only local? So let me just show you a video clip of this. This has got no sound. Okay, this is a clip courtesy of the Papa Museum in Wellington. I don't know if it will start any minute. Doesn't seem like it's working. Let's try once more. open it directly. Basically, that clip was about. There we go, it was five minutes directly, not five of the fountain. It's processing it, but it's not playing it for some reason. Okay, what that clip was about was basically Pachycetus, which is the ancestral animal, eventually evolved to become one of the modern whale, whales, or just before the modern whales, uh, Durodon. And through, just before Durodon there was Cuchycetus, and before Cuchycetus there was another one, which uh, slipped my mind, but there are several of them in that phylogeny. Coochie Coo. Coochie Cetus. Yeah. Basically, what happened there, it was a four-legged animal, almost a dog-like creature uh, that they have a fossil of, and the theory goes, or the proposal goes among uh, evolutionists that that creature eventually became aquatic, uh, its legs became uh, vestigial and eventually formed fins, fully formed fins over millions of years as we have today in our um, border of modern whales. If you close that session it might become corrupted. If you close the player itself um, before double clicking. Close the player? Yeah, and then, then restart it from as you did, but I think okay, this one is corrupted. Let's try that. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Uh, 
start off from from the my it's got like four point one three megabytes. So it's an MP four which should actually be yeah. sitting there. There's also another player on that computer yes, which might be better. You might just Okay, where is that? If you right click on the file you can go to open with you it might show you hopefully the the other player that's available. Okay. Well, I'm not quite sure where you uh, if you look for it, you know, it doesn't um, get to choose programs. <coughs> uh, Power DVD might open it. Okay. I don't know if that maybe that only works with DVDs. Right. Yeah, this is on YouTube actually, so if it. Um, Keep playing, just see. If we had Wi-Fi, we would have been able to. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no. Right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I might just show you that clip next week because it's only a short clip. But suffice to say that. The whole notion of limbs becoming vestigial is quite plausible because genetic information actually can get lost over time. However, we cannot anticipate and there's no proof currently that genetic information can be added to. In other words, if the original four-legged creature with no fins phenotypically had DNA with information for building that creature in its four-leggedness, in its bipedal state, then actually in its tetrapedal state, then it is not conceivable to think that through millions of years that animal could have evolved to eventually form fully functional fins because the information wasn't in the original DNA. So it's possible that the creature could have lost its legs. And you can see part of this there. There it starts to form fins, but there it has lost its um, limbs. So it's only rudimentary appendages that it has for um, for limbs, whether you want to call it an intermediary between fully functional fins and um, actually it goes the other way, that, that's the, the later um, Dura I think it is there. I think that might be good to see this. No, it's the other one. But in any event, you get the idea that that would not be possible. So it's possible to have lost those legs. How it would have survived is quite inconceivable. So this is where the theory of evolution does not make sense. Because where would the original information for building fins come from had it not been present from the start in the four-legged land? Mammal. So let's bring up a table, the one that we've had all along, and what shall we conclude for that clip or that proposal? Well, I'll give it a frowny face, I don't know about you. <laughs> um, yeah, I cannot do anything else. Evolution has no foresight. <laughs> 